and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. Do you have something you want to say? No, I don't have anything I want to say. Okay. Finish your intro. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are here to do what? <laughs> Celebrate what? Is this episode 100? This is it. This is the one. You've been giving me so much. So much what? Flack? Yeah. Because your sense of urgency is non-existent. One, I didn't know it was episode 100. I've told you. Two. I've told you. We've talked about this. No, we have not. We haven't talked in like two weeks. You're right. I've talked about it. You haven't listened. <laughs> Uh, um, no, you've just been so like, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Like, I'm not being productive. Are you going to say I wasn't being productive? <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't being productive. I wasn't being productive. You were in bed on the phone while church was playing on the TV. I was catching up on missed sermons from Union Church <laughs> that they post the day after because they don't do live streaming, which is fine. But I've missed a few. Because my new role, my Monday mornings aren't open, so I used to watch it. Very, very aware of how unavailable your new role had you. So, I've started, I, I had like four of them that I wanted to catch up on. And who, are you ready? Did you catch up? Yeah, I did. Good. Happy for you. I'm happy for me too. And now we can. My soul is filled. My spirit man. Now we can record our episode. <clears throat> By the way, I just want to let you know that YouTube has a pause function. Should you ever need to like do something and come back to the sermon and not lose your spot? You don't ca- you don't pause the Holy Spirit. Sure you do. You don't People say do lose this, I'll be back. Fake pastors do it all the time. Anyway. It's actually really a good thing we haven't recorded in three weeks. Because it's been way more than because three I've weeks. had I had a sty. Mm-hmm. And I multiple styes on uh on my right eye, so it looked like I got punched in the face. I'm about to be. Which, had we recorded, I was just going to use it as an opportunity to let the world know. Finally, tell my tell my story. <laughs> How you abuse? <laughs> wow, you abuse me. See, 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 we live in such a toxic world. Toxic masculinity runs rampant, where men feel like they can't tell their truth. Mm. Is that what you're doing? Um, and it's very possible for men to be in an abusive relationship mm-hmm. with a woman. Mm, absolutely. And that's that's the truth I've been living. And I guess I'm using this now. Our platform now is as an opportunity to come clean. But yeah, Jessica very regularly <laughs> assaults me. I've got the bruises to prove it. If anybody wants to if anybody wants to see Y'all it. save him. Come, somebody come get him. It's Please. Fine. It's fine. Please. Somebody can get him. Take kids, too. Speaking of kids, sweetheart. No, I'll keep my kids. Huh? I said, no, I'll keep my kids. Yeah, you can have them. We uh, just got back from... Cancun. Cancun. Mexico. First family trip. International family trip. First? Well... As a I guess family of... Local trips. Family of five. Family of five, excuse me. Mm-hmm. It was it was exciting. It was. I think the beginning of the year, Savi just kind of no, Savi's had an interest in planes for a while, and I want to say early in the year, maybe la- late last year, I said I'm gonna get her on a plane. I want her to experience flying. Um, so maybe around February, I was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go somewhere. We're gonna. We're going on a trip. We're going. And initially it was going to be domestic, I think. And then I was like, everybody's got passports. Like I was really serious about like, Myrtle Beach. I was firm about getting everybody passports last year. So I was like, let's let's use them. Because, you know, kids passports only last five years. Five. Let's get a stamp. Five and done. So we were debating between a few. I was debating between a few locations. And... I kind of wanted us to all go somewhere new, yeah. but um, 
I also, you know, it was Savi's first flight, Sonoma's first flight. And I wanted somewhere that the flight wouldn't be too long because, you know, they're still they're still kids. They're going to act age appropriate based on their mood. And um, Cancun just seemed like the easiest affordable because, again, we're a family of five uh, destination. So we um, we are a Marriott family and our favorite international resort is Royalton that that chain that's in the Marriott family. So we located one that had, you know, great reviews was known for being a good family resort. And that's where we went. So we went to Cancun and it was, we went into it knowing like, this is like, this is not our leisure trip. Like, like we have our own trips that are like for us, like we are on vacation. This was a trip that we knew was for the kids. So I think we went in knowing like, we're not going to have the glitz and glamor relaxation that we normally have, but and despite no couple, it all, no couples massages, no couples massages. We could have split up. We could have done on two different days at the kids. Zone, but, the it did, but again, we went in like this, for the this is for the kids. So I wasn't thinking about anything for me. Like I got my Aperol spritz. That was about as far for me. Like this is my thing as we went. Um, but I just remember cause Savi's our more, she's our middle and she's our more, you kind of have to explain things to her, even though she's, she's four, but you still have to new experiences. She's very, she's not, she's down for the cause, but you like, you have to yeah, explain the cause. Yeah. You have to explain the cause. Whereas like solace was very much so like you scoop her up and like, we're going. So I traveled internationally with solace by myself twice. She's been, we've taken her to Cancun. She's gone to the Dominican Republic. Like she's been to New York. Like she's, she's been she, to Ghana. She's yeah. Twice. She's, she's the typical, I don't know if typical, but she was like just that first kid that like, it was like, Hey, you're one kid and we're just going to do all of our things with Savi is just a lot more sensitive and you have to prepare her and you have to warn her and, you know, let her know what's coming. So I was really concerned out of the three of them. I was most concerned about flying with her. I just wasn't sure how she was going to handle it. Um, but I remember cause on the flight down, we had David and Solace and Savi were sitting the three of them and then it was Sonoma and I and then another woman was next to me and I remember because David was like did you tell her about you know takeoff and I was like "Ooh, I didn't but I didn't want to psych her out but I didn't want to have her be surprised in the same vein too um and he was like no I'll, I'll talk to her about it so you know plane starts going really fast and I got Sonoma who clearly has genius not a worry knowledge. not a worry in the world. Just sitting in her chair chewing on some gum like the fourth piece of gum that i gave her because she kept swallowing them um and when we finally get in the air i lean forward and i look at savi and she just had this i can't even i don't even know the expression i i just i remember how i feel just looking at her and making eye contact with her and like seeing the pride in herself and the excitement and the like I did it. And cause I think she even knows that she's very sensitive to things, mm. but like, she was like, I did it. Like I could just see it and I felt it. And I, I really spent this trip living through the kids and, you know, you're in a, we're adults. We've, we've flown a bunch of times. Yeah. We've gone to like new places and it's exciting, but that first is so different. And to be able to do it as a family and like to look at, in her eyes and see her experience it. And she's still at, she's at that age where everything is so fresh. Um, I just really loved that moment. And like, she had the same thing when she landed, uh, we landed and like, I don't know if you had braced her about landing, that it would be bumpy. I was trying to hold Sonoma to prepare her. And she just was like, she was at that point where she was like, if we have to be on this plane any longer, like, it's about to be a problem, but she was giggling. Like when we started bumping and we landed and I looked at Savi after everything was over and it was like, like she again was proud of herself. Like she did it. Like I was on my first plane ride. Like I had the window seat. We went up, we've gone down. So I was just really excited for that. And, and so, you know, I think I don't know the rules of good parenting, but I think as one of them, is usually wanting your kids to have experiences 
that exceed yours. And, you know, I, the first time I was on a plane, I think I was 15. We were going to Louisiana. It was two weeks before Katrina hit. Um, and I remember that being a big deal, but my four year old, like four, she was on a plane Two, So no one was on a plane. Now, will she remember it? Who knows? Um, but you know, it, I was, as a family, I was proud of us. It's, it's a lot to, you know, to plan a trip for two people, two adults. Imagine, you know, you're, you're planning for, for five, three of them being kids and taking into account, like kids have volatile moments and, you know, who can handle what. And, you know, am I mentally prepared for, you know, being in an, a, a foreign environment with these kids and, you know, what if someone gets sick? What if someone gets hurt? All of this stuff. But I had like, once we, we got into the, like we landed and I was like, thank you, Lord. And then we got to the hotel or the resort and I was just like, you know, thank you, God. Like, thanks for like this. It happened. We did it. We're here and we're about to have a great time. And I don't know. I just, I can't really put to words what, and for some families, it's, they might be like, what, why is this a big deal to you? Like this, it's just a family vacation, but like it, to me, it, it, it's, it means a lot that we were able to, like, my kids have gone international and we as a family, like, I mean, our suite was wonderful. Like we, like that happened. Um, and that's a core memory they're going to be able to hold on to. So, um, it was just, it was, it was good. I'm glad to be home. I think for the first trip, it was the right amount of time. I felt bad. Savi really wanted to go to the water park and we just, we didn't get to make it, uh, walked by it. Like every day. 10 times every day. And I think I just thought it was more daunting than it actually was. And we had a pool in our room. So it was like, that was more comfortable. Cause I, like we could control ourselves as opposed to like other kids and parents and all of that. And then the direct son, Ooh, that Mexican son is something different. Um, so that was the one thing that I was like, dang, we, I, we dropped the ball there in terms yeah. of getting her to the water park. But, you know, I said, we were there and we talked about potentially making it like a family tradition. Like maybe we go to Cancun the, the week before, you know, school starts or something. But I, I told her, I said, we'll be back. And when we come back, you're going to the water park. Sorry. I talked a lot. No, it was, it was good. It's very good. It's nice to hear just all the enthusiasm and the, the emotion yeah, your, I mean it was a long build up. Your, your account of the we we worked trip. really hard to be able to do that. Um, we did picked up some side hustles and there hustled. was side hustled. We side hustled. Yeah, we side hustled all summer. All summer, along with our regular jobs, along with managing kids. So it was a it it was it felt like a big accomplishment to be able to do this for them. Um, And I just, you know, it was like, I kept having moments. Like we really woke up one day and said, we're going to take three kids to Mexico to Mexico. And we did it. We did. And they had a time. Time was had. Yeah. You know, the way they slept, you would have thought that they were <laughs> drinking tequila. They would pass out and, and, you know, Cancun is an hour behind us, time zone wise, the central time zone. So I'd look at the time and I'd accommodate for like, okay, this is normally like, okay, it's 6 a.m. here, but it's seven o'clock at home. Like they should be, you know, rolling through here. Nope. Nah, nah. And then when they would come to like Sonoma's hair, I knew Sonoma was sleeping hard because her hair was like. <laughs> was yeah, was, like was doing something she was like I, one morning i peeked my because we had woken up and we watched i i woke up um and i was like i'm gonna go watch the sunrise and you came out with me and we sat there and we were watching the sunrise and chit-chatting and i wanted that moment because i figured we weren't gonna have a lot of isolated moments to ourselves so I figured, you know, it's just a matter of time before the kids roll through. And I remember Sovereign, the first night we got there, because they had a mini fridge in their room. She was like, so if I get thirsty in the middle of the night, I can just get myself something to drink. And we're like, Savi, you don't get thirsty in the middle of the night at home. Why would you do that here? But anyway, so we sat outside for like an hour and a half, you know, until the sun, like the sun came out. And I was like, oh, this is not trying to play. 
I'm gone. Cause y'all, I don't do elements. I just don't. Yes, we, we know there's like, per, I, there's a, a, a small window at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. That's perfect elements, like no bugs, no sun, no humidity. And that window is very brief outside of that window. I don't like to be in elements. You know, the Lord chose me for such a time as this with AC and vehicles for a reason. So I was like, okay. And I was in a robe and I was high. So I came inside. So I was like, for sure, these children are awake. So I go into the bedroom and I peek my head in and like blackout curtains. And these kids look like women who have gone to a bachelorette party (laughs) and like the next morning and they're just, just dead, dead sleep. Um, And I was like, you know what? Y'all enjoy it. So you know, I just literally laid around. Day, I think David went up and smoked a cigar because we had the main floor terrace and then we had the upstairs terrace. I'm going to let him talk about this room. Um, and I just laid in bed. I was just like, okay, I guess I'll watch church because it was Sunday morning waiting for these people to wake up. Like, I've never waited for them to wake up. To wake up. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was a great trip and um, very, very few you know, temper tantrums, mm-hmm. outbursts. Uh, Sonova had had a pretty big one, or maybe actually more of a mild one on the way home. But at that point, it's just you know, she was over it. She was she was ready to be home. Um, I can't even remember what she was she was upset about. It, I mean, she's two, so it probably yeah. was something insignificant. Nap. Nobody napped. Nobody took naps. Yeah, no one, no one napped. Everybody once they were up, they were they were up for the day, which is probably why they ended up sleeping in as as much as they did but yeah man the room was was great to to call it a room it was not a room it was sweet yes it was a, it was a, it was, a, it was a, it's what they call it, the sky chairman suite and it was it was epic two floors but basically you had a suite two bedroom suite a king and then two queens and then you had a terrace mm-hmm. which was for you know so it was terrace it was a very open area with the pool and then it had seating area multiple like cabanas where you could lay <clears throat> then he even had like a little grill area where if you wanted to grill of course we didn't we didn't use it we did have a family dinner up there uh second to last night that we were mm-hmm. we were in mexico and that was that was really nice and um it was our suite was facing sunrises in the east east so it was facing east so that's how we were able to like see the sunrise but then once it was out we were like okay let's let's go away so you know middle to to late uh half of the day the sun was was behind Mm -hmm. the room so we would go out and you know just spend a couple hours in the pool and it was just it was just perfect the weather wasn't too hot once the sun was behind the building and it was just it was just great sonoma we found out is is a water kid she just got in and she had floaties but she just took to the water and she was (laughs) she was at peace she was in her element she was like don't bother me i'm good Oh, but when she got into it, they were playing a game. Like she yeah. would do this splash thing she with David. Would. He'd splash her and she'd be like, Oh, Ote, Ote. And then she would splash me. And then she'd turn around. She'd like, I'd You turn and try to turn the water. And she's moving like snail, sn- snail slow. But yeah, it was just, it was just a great time. And I was, I was joking with Jess. The reason why I have status with Marriott is because of all the traveling I did, like at this point, four years ago. Mm hmm four even five years ago actually no it was, it was longer than that yeah. because it was, it was pre-pandemic so we saw me it was like 2017 2018 all right i did a lot of, i was basically on the road three weeks out of the out of every month and just racked up points racked up status and then because of covid nobody was traveling in 2020 so they just extended the status so i'm my peak was probably here in 2021 and i've come down a couple of spots but it's still Good enough to get high enough. Still, yeah, so high enough to get perks and access to clubs and things like that. So it was. We just figured, hey, still got the status. We're gonna hustle this summer. Uh, We're not gonna be around, you know, on the weekends to do random fun things with the girls. And we told them that going into the summer, said, but we're gonna reward you girls with a trip. And you know, we were able to pull it off. Just did all most of the planning. She's that's what she's very good at is is planning. I'm more of the okay. Once we have it set. Let's get everybody prepared. Let's let's get things together. And it just came together. It was it was great. I was a little anxious. 
Yeah, but uh, after seeing how well the two younger kids handled the flight, I was like, oh, yeah, this is about to be a blast. So uh, it's it was good. It was. It was good. And and uh, glad to be home. Yeah. Although now we have to reacclimate ourselves and get laundry. We decided we're going to wash everything, whether we wore it or not. So whether we're in the middle of that, but uh, it's great. It's great to be back in the house and getting ready for our new chapter, which is sovereign in pre-K and solace in fourth grade. So it's uh, life is lifing as they, as they say, did you know, um, switching gears slightly, did you know that I got caught up in um, another mini Mini scandal on threats on our way to Cancun. Did I tell you about this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you know that you did you did you go ever go and and no. follow it Mm-mm. and see that it was it was a thing? So for uh, if, it, if it's to my threats era, I feel like it's over. It's not over. <laughs> <laughs> I so it's, like it's I over. do feel bad. I miss it because um, we made a lot of bonds. But I feel like threats has has now officially. I feel oh, like, we like purpose. Michelle Barack was president. Michelle was first lady, but it's president who does the work. Like I just, I have to show be diplomatic every once in a while, but like everybody's coming for you. So that's what threads has turned into where I will pop in every once in a while, but I'm, it's also the off season for the NBA. It is. And I'm pretty sure once basketball season picks up, uh, NBA season, NBA, yeah. NBA basketball season. You just said, that season. season. No, it was an NBA season. Because the WNBA is going on right now. I know. I want to make sure you're not, I, sure you're not sliding the W. It's. I'm not. I would never slight the W. Um, but I, when I reference basketball season with threads, I'm that's. I'm just lumping them all together. But you you make a valid point. And I popped in for it's, the Olympics. Yeah, but, yeah, you did a little bit. But I missed like all of. <laughs> Oh, team use. Always had to be somewhere else. But go we, on. We all we, we all know we all we all know your your actual allegiances to to Ghana and all the African but nations. But no, like at Ghana doesn't. Yeah, I think they, they have like basketball. athletes and one yeah. of them was a swimmer though. Um, but I just didn't have the time to really dive into the Olympics like I wanted to. But so good. Nah. So like you said, we were we were going to focus on the girls. So I had told myself it's if. My threads notifications are on. It's going to be very hard for me to untether. So knowing that about myself, I didn't delete the app off my phone. Though. I was going to say, I was like, I'm pretty sure I saw you on threads. Um, I didn't delete it, but I turned off my, my notifications. So I was just like, and I had talked about, I'm pretty sure I had talked about the trip as the date for us to depart was approaching. So I had just put, I got up early that morning that we left. We left Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, and I just put uh, mayor out the hashtag mayor out with the little my little hand emoji and, and the mic and the mic drop, uh, and that was it. I just was signing off. So we're traveling. Uh, we're in the, up that morning. I finished packing because I didn't I didn't pack all the way Friday night. Uh, we're getting everybody together, getting everybody to the airport. Uh, we're at the airport. We made decent time. I uh, had a little bit of of lag time before we had to get on the plane and we get on the plane two and a half hour flight. I think I fall asleep a little bit and then we get to Cancun and then obviously the room. And I look at my, my Instagram cause I figure out still post, you know, pictures on my, on my story and whatnot. And Sarah had messaged me. She said, Hey, just checking in and everything. Okay. And I was like, Hey, yeah, we just got settled in the room. Like what's up? <laughs> she sent me the eye roll emoji and she was like, your little mare out caused a stir. And she was like, not really. And then she was like, but God, <laughs> like, gosh, dang it, David. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, people thought like something was wrong. Like I was done. <laughs> like I was done, done leaving threads. And she was like, uh, what is she? I can't remember what she said. I could pull it up, but she basically told me like, yeah, don't do that again. I was like, my bad. Um, causing uproar. Yeah, and I had a, I got a couple of messages from from other people. They're like, "Mayor out, mayor out." And I'm like, w- "Someone needs to examine this community. <laughs> we're either we're very sensitive. We're either very we're either too close as strangers, or there's something else going on because we should not be this paranoid when we have. But I'm guilty of it too, right? Mm-hmm. Like if I haven't seen somebody post in a minute, I'll just check it. Like, yo, hope everything's all right. 
and people are probably just out living their life because they're not, you know, addicted to social media. And on my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, yes, I probably could have just said, hey, I'm signing off because I'm going to be in Cancun with my girls. But I had already done, I, in my mind, I'd already said that on the timeline. And I just wanted to do like flow play on the, you know, Kobe, you said Mamba out, rest in peace. I want to do like the mayor out, the mic drop. I didn't think anyone would assume that, oh my God, them, Dave's had enough. He's done with threads. I also very regularly say that I'm never leaving. Like, I'm just not. The day I leave is the day Mark Zuckerberg shuts threads down. That's going to be the day that I pack up my my threads and leave. So, um, I did I did break my my commitment and I did sign on toward the the middle of our our last day there uh, and saw all the notifications and things like that. Uh, most people were having fun, but some people <laughs> they freaked out. I was like, yeah, I was like five percent worried. This is wrong. And I'm like. I appreciate, like, I appreciate it, right? Like, it's, it's very warming, uh, that, that people would be concerned for me or anybody else who, who would, I guess, drop a very, uh, cryptic, cryptic message before signing off for, I guess, a number of hours. Um, and I think that's, that is part of what makes, uh, threads. It was still small enough to notice. Like, when I was very active, there were names that if I didn't see, I'd be like, I haven't. And maybe because you're just frequently engaging with these people. I'm like, I haven't engaged with this person in a yeah. while. And then I would just be like, hey, at, you know, ABCD, where are you at? What's happening? You, yeah, what's good? you good? Um, so that is nice uh, that the relationships forge, but. Like, God forbid I ever <laughs> I mess up and get my account suspended or something. Oh my gosh, don't do that. Don't um, put that in the atmosphere. I, I feel like because actually it's funny. No, because when we did the surprise, did we ever talk about that here? Yeah. We talked about okay. That. Yeah. They would but, get you straight. But also, it is funny because you mentioned the Olympics. So, clipping NBA games, WNBA games really isn't a problem because the NBA I think is on, probably one of the, the most lenient of the national sports leagues with people sharing, like creating their own clips Mm -hmm. and content of their game footage and sharing it up. Because if you think about it, it only expands like reach of of the game. And they're really into like the younger demo anyway, trying to, to target those and get them interested in the league. And they're all about short clips, highlights, things like that. So that's how, you know, like Sarah, uh, doc Thompson, myself, for even free time earlier in the season last year, we would just clip games and throw it out really without any worry of, mm-hmm. of uh, retaliation from the league or being struck down. The Olympics is different. The IOC, they own all the content um, and they, they will strike your stuff down quick and you'll get an email. You might even get your account suspended. So I learned in the preliminary games that the league, that the, the U S team USA was playing and it was on FS one and I would clip those and it was like, it was no issue. But I tried to clip something from when the Olympics first started, when they started pool play and it went up and then I got this Instagram message. It was like, your video is not available in some regions. And Instagram is just horrible with moderation. Mm -hmm. Um, No disrespect to anybody who works on that, who who I'm connected with on threads. But like you'll get a message that your content's been taken down or your account's been limited. And it'll have it'll have a, a a link for you to click to find out more or speak to somebody, and it takes you nowhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it just they give you no it just disappears. So it's just like all right, I just got to wait this out until whenever when they decide to give me uh, my account back. So it said to learn more, click here, and I'm thinking it's going to show me where my stuff is restricted. But it's just it took me to a, an empty web page and it said thank you. <laughs> so I'm like for what? So I was like, all right, let me delete. All right, I'll delete the video. Um, cause now you can see views and it, it just, it wasn't getting views. So I was like, well, there's no point in putting this out. So I deleted it. And then I got another, immediately got a message from Instagram. It was like, your video has been restored. Like, no, it hasn't. I deleted it. Like what the, like, what is wrong with your moderation? Yeah. You know, I, I know. Look, Zuck been rocking all these chains. The video was on threads. Well, Instagram, Instagram know, threads built on top of Instagram. Okay. But yeah, so a lot of your community, because there's no DMS, mm-hmm. there's like no private message feature. So they just. They just deal with your uh, Instagram account. Like I seen Zuck rocking all these chains. He's in his whatever era. I know they got money. Like quarterly earnings just came out. Buku bucks. Hire some human 
moderators. I, I should be. I, I this Facebook is one of the biggest, wealthiest, most powerful companies in the world. I should be able to speak to a human immediately after you send me a message that my account has been limited or restricted or my contents violated some rule. I shouldn't go to a blank <laughs> HTML page that says thank. Like what? Anyways, neither here nor there. So my stuff got taken down. So I was like, okay, so they're clearly not allowing people to clip. But I never got any emails. I never got any, like, your account's been limited. Nothing like that. So I kept trying different. <laughs> I was testing, testing fate. I kept trying to clip different aspects of the game. So I was like, okay, well, maybe my initial clip was too long. Maybe I got to keep it under a certain amount of time. But it didn't matter because I even clipped, like, a seven-second um, capture of LeBron doing his char- toss at the beginning of the game. Struck it down. So then I realized, okay, hit you with a knot in my. <laughs> they hit me. They hit me with like three or four of joints. Like I'm surprised my account still was still up. They just like nah, nah, nah. And I was like, okay, well, wait a minute. These everything that I've posted has been live. What about replays? Mm. So, um, I, 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 at first I tried just like a replay of like a player reacting, like uh, the bitch reacting to Braun when he got an and one. That one stayed up. So like, okay there might be something to this theory. So then um, I think I did another one and it stayed up. So during the championship game or the gold medal game, excuse me. Um, it was, it was, it was fantastic. You didn't, you didn't see that one. Did you No, that's when I had to pick up solids. Oh my God. Just the, the game was so amazing. Um, I caught the women's one, but I, I missed the men's. Yes. Yeah. We did watch the women's one together. Um, I got a couple of Steph Curry threes and whatever. And it just, then things went, crazy because none none of the official olympics accounts nor nbc nor the olympics were actually posting clips on threads they were posting like uh photos mm. you know graphics but all of the live all of the video highlights were being posted on on x so uh doc thompson was doing a lot of clips too and his stuff was going crazy like with likes and views and then i was able, actually able to get some going Initially, once I realized that it was the re- they weren't really concerned about replays for whatever it is, maybe if they're doing uh, AI content moderators, maybe they can tell the difference between something that's actually like live footage versus a replay. I guess replay doesn't add as much value. I don't know, but it worked. Everything I posted was a replay. Um, and it was, the, it was just going crazy. Like some of them, some of them, like the biggest engagement I've ever gotten on any of my threads posts. I even did one of Shikari. Uh, crossing the finish line when she turned and looked. That thing got like 45,000 likes, which is pretty viral for threats. Would you actually said you would retire if it hit a certain number? So it, didn't, it didn't hit it. Okay, I was going to say, technically you, you will be leaving. I said, I, I, believe, I said, that joint is 50, I'm, I'm done. And it stopped at 45, so... I was getting nervous because I kept going up. I'm like, alright, wait a minute. I was, just, I was just playing. I was having a fun conversation with my wife. But this thing won't. You did actually say it won't stop going up, and then it finally, it finally, uh, it finally stopped. Um, so it was great. Like, and clearly, and one thing, um, Doc and I were talking about, like, there's, like, people want to see that stuff mm-hmm. on Threads, and I wish the social media managers for those official Olympics accounts, NBC accounts, would see that, like, see what we were doing. Like, oh, well, maybe we just need to post. Like, the engagement is out there. You just got to go. You got to go cover it. So, um, I'm, and I'm telling, I'm getting to my point in that somebody, <laughs> somebody's account had disappeared for like three days. And I hadn't noticed it until they got, they got their access back. They were like, my account got suspended for three days because I posted this clip of some, uh, one of the, one of the random <laughs> sports things that were happening. It was like, because you posted trademark right. account or, uh, content. <laughs> and I went and looked at my posts. I got like that. I was like, okay, maybe maybe somebody is looking out for me. So I don't know that anything could happen to my account. I'm obviously not going to push my luck or much more than I did, at least with the Olympics. But yeah, I guess I am. I don't know. Somebody's looking out for me. Maybe I would assume because uh, nothing happened to me. And I was posting like, like. A lot of eyes were on that uh, men's championship game and the women's game too. I posted some stuff for that. All the stuff went went crazy. So hopefully next year, uh, not obviously in 28, 2028, if uh, hopefully threads will still be around, uh, I will see we'll see different participation from a lot of these, a lot of these big social media accounts. Um, speaking of threats. <laughs> 
Did you know I was in another? Uh, I call it a squabble, but a squabble. Not one. Not one that I I, that I I was not seeking this this beef. I call it a fake feud. Is what I'm calling it. hashtag fake feud. Did I? Did you? Did, <laughs> fake feud vibes huh is that the name actually i don't know I will, i'm between hunted vibes because this is episode 100 um fake feud vibes might actually be it i'll be honest i wasn't even thinking about it but this this might be it so did you see you haven't seen any of this i haven't seen any you've been you've been offline all right so i'm gonna take you back and i'm gonna try to be succinct about this and i'm gonna insert some clips uh some evidence and i'm gonna build a story build it so everybody who's watching this threads, uh, vibe tribe, I'm not, I know you guys, if you're not on threads, you're kind of like out of the loop. So I'm going to try to make this story as inclusive as possible. Even if you're like, what's happening. So a few weeks ago, one threads is still, there's still some times where I, I forget, uh, my, I'll call, we'll call it status on threads, right? So uh, obviously a, a relatively popular account when mm-hmm. it comes to NBA threads. Uh, there are some some people in the greater threads universe uh, who have bigger accounts who are aware of me, who follow me, who interact with some of my things. Um, I would imagine if you're interested in basketball and you're, you spend any decent amount of time on threads, you, you're familiar with me, whether you follow me or not. Threads works differently in terms of how it boosts uh, posts, uh, discovery, if you will. Whereas on Twitter, if I have like 60 followers and I comment on something, my post is probably not going to be recommended to somebody else who's coming in to look at the post because I have no value Mm -hmm. essentially to Twitter. I don't have a lot of followers and I don't subscribe to Twitter blue or whatever the hell it's called at this point. Threads, instead of looking at your profile as a user, looks at whether or not you're replying to how active you are in engagement. So if you reply a lot, um, your I believe your reply under a post is more likely to be seen. And then also if obviously more people are liking it, commenting on it. So I would imagine there are a number of people who obviously who, who follow me, but may actually even be subscribed to my activity. <laughs> so I forget, I just forget sometimes that if I comment on something, a number of other people are actually going to see it. So, and you know, I tend to like some messy content every every once in a while. So I'll see some stuff and it'll just make me laugh and I'll like it. And I'll just drop a crying laughing emoji and I'll bounce. I'll be on to the next thing, especially early in the morning when I'm just getting my daily dose of threads before I go on about my business. And a lot of times I don't even know what's going on. If I just see a funny post, I'll just react because shit's funny. It made me laugh. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, Ty, uh, Dodger Dallas, Dodger Dallas. I believe that's the the handle. I know who you are. I just I'm terrible with names uh, or handles. Excuse me. Had said that uh, he listed a number of of black uh, threads accounts who he really appreciated. I was on there. I believe you're on there. Um, if not, you need to, you know, get, you, get, your, get your get your get your get your blackness up. <laughs> oh, that's I'm not. I'm pretty it. sure. I'm pretty sure you were on there though. Um, really? And it was a number. It was a number of people. But I, I think he put. If you tag more than 10 accounts in a post, nobody, get, nobody gets notified. Um, so you would just have to see it on your for you feed. If it's less than if it's 10 or less, then you get notified. So I think he put more than 10. Um, and so there are a couple people notable in the I guess the the black NBA threads uh, user base who are left out. So Ezra was one of them. So he he quoted it and, and it said something. And then Jamar apparently quoted it. And said, "Hey, you know, I guess I can't remember exactly what it is. I'll put it up. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't re- <laughs> research this. This is all off the cuff. Uh, I had said something about got to do better or whatever. Uh, I want to make it into like the Black Threads User Hall of Fame, something silly like that. So this uh, other account, Olive Winters writes, uh, a Black female Threads user uh, who's really popular um, in her own in her own right, quoted him." And said, <laughs> get your poom poom up, poom step your poom poom game up. So when I'm scrolling my feed, what I saw was her quote. I didn't, I don't even know that I realized she was quoting Jamar, but I figured because of the content of the post, whoever she was quoting, they had a relationship and they were just having, you know, messy fun. 
So she was like, you know, step your poom poom game up <laughs> and then maybe you'll make the list next time. And then she had a couple of silly memes or gifts. And I'll be honest, it just made me laugh like a, like an actual physical laugh. So I just replied with my my patented three crying emoji things and then not none of it. Like I just it was, I was on my feed. I laughed. It was funny. I moved on. Fast forward to like two weeks ago, I think. Um, I posted that we were going to be in New York uh, at the end of the beginning of next month. And Jesse, who is now part of uh, Unthreaded TV, mm-hmm. which is the rebrand of NBA, the NBA Threads show, which Steve and Jamar ran. Uh, Steve has some personal things come up, so he stepped aside. Uh, Jamar was running it with Ty for a minute, and then they kind of took a step away, and then they they brought it back. So now it's now it's Ty, Jamar, Jesse, Lee, and uh, and Bone Bone Storm uh, is behind the scenes and producing. It's and it and it's, and it's wonderful. Like the presentation, the graphics uh, from a creative sense. Um, if you're going to rebrand, it has to be better mm-hmm. than everything you've had before. And and Steve and Jamar did a really great job with uh, the initial branding and and concept of the NBA Thread Show and Unthreaded TV. They've just they've just taken what was great and made it made it even better. Uh, so shout out to all of them. It's it's fantastic. However, I need to continue my story. So. Uh, Jesse said, hey, Jamar, can we do a live recording of Unthreaded TV? And then Jamar was like, I'd love to. I want to address this. And he screenshotted my emojis. And at the time, now I know all of this because I went back and looked at everything. At the time I'm reading this, I have no idea what's going on. And I leave that same series of emojis on <laughs> anything that makes me laugh to a certain extent. So I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I laugh. I was like, what is this? Like, why are you, why are you screenshotting? And then he had the date and it was like August 6th. I'm like, bro, I'm not going all the way back to August 6th. Like thread search isn't at that level yet where I can do it easily. And so Jesse was like, ha ha, everything will be explained in episode two. So I was like, okay, well let me go. Let me go check it out. I was going to watch it anyway, but now I'm, now my interest is peaked. So I go look, um, at the episode and Jamar takes over and he's like, he, and he talks about Ty's post and how he quoted it. And this is when I find out that he and, and Olive didn't actually know each other. Like they weren't friends. They weren't following each other. Like he had no idea who she was. Now Olive follows Ty, which is how I guess she was able to see the post. Mm. I don't know how it all happened. Um, <laughs> And then I guess Jamar had reacted like a num- in a number of posts underneath it, for some reason I didn't see it. It didn't show up in my notifications, but he didn't appreciate her telling him to essentially step his, you know, poom poom game up. <laughs> and then he was like, he was telling the story. He was like, I wanted to see who was going to boost this. And then, sure enough, the first <laughs> first reply is Rush. And so I'm seeing all this. And I'm putting pieces together. I'm like, oh man, I, I don't, I can't. With any certainty, I can't say that I remember knowing that it was Jamar. She quoted. I just remembered her post and that it was hilarious. And I was like, surely they know each other because nobody would be this messy. Surprise. Olive is clearly this messy. <laughs> this messy. And she even admitted to it. She was like, I'm sorry you got pulled into this. I was just trying to have some messy fun. Um, so he was like, yeah, and it was Rush that boosted the post. And he was like, you know, I put him in the NBA thread song. I comment on all his, his, him and his wife's podcast. And he left me out to dry. Nobody had my back. Nobody was supporting me and blah, 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 blah. And that's true. I'm going to take, because even in the midst of a fake feud, which we are, we are, we are drawing lines at this point. No, it's fine. I can I can admit that yes, Jamar from day one since we have connected, he is he has shown love to Rush Vibes. Uh he has shown love to me and you. And we even featured his his song at the end of um our, our All Star Weekend episode, which I think is the last episode we recorded before this previous one. So he's absolutely right. He has supported supported the pod and supported you and I. Um but it but <laughs> And I know he was having fun with it, but he was like, nobody had his back and people were boosting <laughs> something, you know, that he didn't appreciate. I went to the replies. I'm like, who is going to give this anonymous piece of energy some boost so this post can go viral? I look. 
the first person I see is Yo Rush with three laughing faces, bro. Mm. And I'm like, the same Yo Rush I shouted out on the NBA Thread song, the same Yo Rush, I'm in the comments of his him and his wife YouTube video showing love. I'm like, wow, Yo Rush. Then I looked at the likes. I'm like, oh my God. This is what this community think of me. Which, you know, is interesting. And I'll, I'll come back to that. And so I was like, oh, this is what you were talking about. So I went back on the timeline. I said, my bad. I thought y'all knew each other. And so we're all having fun with it. So then they dropped episode three. I think they recorded episode two, but because of the Olympics and they were talking about it, they wanted to get to episode three. So they kind of didn't really do promotion for episode two. They just dropped it and then dropped episode three right after it. They had um, they were talking about one of my posts. Um, uh, it was Steph Curry related posts. It's not really important, but in the conversation of the post, Jamar dropped again that he still has smoke with me. So I was like, okay, so this is now two episodes in a row of your new rebranded platform that you have said you have smoked with me. I don't bother nobody. I would just bother uh, Jamar. I saw something that was funny. I responded, and I kept going about my day. Jamar ain't DM me. He didn't call me. He didn't have my number, so he couldn't. And he didn't hit me up on the YouTube like nothing. But he wanted to go to this platform. And he want to call me out? Yo, Rush? Me? Are you saying Yo, Rush? Or are you saying... Yo, Rush is in... I am. Are you saying... I it's, am Yo, Rush. Are you saying it's Spanish? Person. Or are you saying it... Third person. So you're not saying... And yo, me. You're not saying Yo, Rush. Like, no. I... Rush. I'm saying Yo. I just want to clarify. I'm saying my handle. And I don't appreciate you acting dense right now. <laughs> So anyways, it got me to it got me to thinking. Because Jamar was upset that people were fanning this poom poom allegation. Can we see that he couldn't that he couldn't he couldn't get enough. Or need or had a poom poom deficiency. I can understand that. Any any man would be upset if that kind of allocate that allegation was tossed at us. I get it. But he kept saying like nobody the, the the statement, and I'm paraphrasing, nobody defended him, nobody had his back. People were boosting something that he didn't appreciate. It made me remember. Taco Gate. Yeah, episode 100 of Rush Fives, we're going back to Taco Gate. Because when you dropped a bomb on the timeline. And then disappeared. A, a, a very slanted bomb. That I dislike tacos. Threads went crazy. NBA threads went crazy. My mention, my replies, my notifications went crazy because people couldn't believe that I don't like tacos or I hate tacos, which is what it was described as, which I never said. And to this day, nobody has ever really asked me, like, yo, Russ, tell us the story about you and tacos. No one has done it. They just took your word and they ran with it. But I remember thinking at that time, like, man, I could really use an ally. In this moment, this trying time where people are questioning my credentials to be mayor, they're thinking about revoking my unelected mayor status because of my stance on tacos. And I remember in the midst of the storm, one particular notification set me off. Someone had posted a Reddit screenshot where someone was like, I don't really understand tacos and went. Well, number one, whoever the actual person was, like they have some real trauma that they need to deal with because there's no way that somebody should make a post as succinct and as as disrespectful toward tacos as as they made. Like they they were really like I don't like tacos, but he posted it and it was like, yo, I went back and some the person posted and was like, I went back and found this post from Yo Rush on Reddit. And I looked and it had my name, and then one, I don't even use Reddit. <laughs> like that I'll I'll look at a Reddit post but I don't even have like a Yo Rush Reddit account and they posted it and of course there's people under there I think Aaron San Diego Aaron was under there Kiki keying it up thinking it was funny do you know who posted it who posted if you had to, if you had to guess like who who do you think posted it Jamar it was Jamar so in the time of need Jessica <laughs> What did Jamar do when I was down and I was out? You know what Jamar did? He kicked me in my shin. 
a fake Reddit post, a real Reddit post that he alt that doctored and put my name at the top to fan the flames. Where was he talking about defense? Was he defending me? No, he was like, oh, everybody's climbing rush. Let me jump in. And then, because this is what Jamar does, he deleted the post <laughs> and then posted the real screenshot. He said, all right, Radio Rush, here you go. Now can I come on the show? Because I told him, I was like, man, we're going to have you be the first NBA Threads person on the show. But now I can't have you on. So he deleted it. And then he showed the fact that he was being dishonest for the clout, for the clicks. So, Jamar, I want to tell you, that while the fake feud is now officially over, because I will not engage in any more back and forth, back and forth, practice what you preach, sir, because the mayor keeps receipts. All I'm gonna say. So, but he he and Oliver cool. I'm cool with everybody, but I had to respond because I'm not gonna let somebody come at me two straight episodes on Unthreaded TV and not have an official response. So that's my response. And I am sorry for, for liking the post because it was messy. And I admit, I love I love a good messy post. I'm not even gonna lie. I just forget sometimes how threads works, and I like stuff and comment on it without even realizing that like some number of people behind me are gonna see it. But um, that was a good fake uh, feud to be in, involved with. <laughs> well, I didn't even know that Jamar and I were beefing, and then when I found out. And realize what it was about. It was fun all over again. Um, but hopefully he's uh, he's gotten it out of his system now. Um, even though I just kind of brought it back up. Mm-hmm. But that's fine. I had to respond. We're going to take it laying down. Not at all. Um, any thoughts on this? Because this is all really your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped the initial taco stuff. And then you weren't on threads to the de- to defend me when I got called messy on the timeline. I got busy with something. I, just, I was off threads for like three days. <laughs> oh, I'm like a bull in the china shop. I just throw a grenade and then I leave. Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect you to have anything. I don't know. I mean, one could argue that in your moment of need, he didn't have your back, but in his moment of need, I didn't know it was him. I didn't know it was him. And I thought if this, I, the, the kind of post it was, and you'll understand this when I actually show it to you. I was like, there's no way that these people aren't cool because this is, this is the most messy of messy. And I just liked it without even, it was, it was on my feed. I read it. I liked it. I reacted and then put it away. I had no idea what it was. I had to go back and research it. Once I saw, um, saw them play it on, on threaded TV. I was like, Oh, <laughs> and then like things started coming back to me, but I can't say with any certainty that I actually knew that she had quoted Jamar. I just saw her post because it was funny. But yeah, so neither one of us had each other. It was back in a time of need, but I don't appreciate him trying to make it seem like I was alone in my abandonment. So he abandoned me and he actually like <laughs> intentionally made things worse for me. I didn't. I did. I was. It was an accident, I guess. On my part, ignorance, which I'll still own up to. But I didn't make no. I didn't go find no Reddit post from ten years ago that says I can't get no poom poom and put Jamar's <laughs> and put Jamar's handle on top of it. I didn't do that. Damn. One of us is not like the other. I'm gonna put it that way. No disrespect. No disrespect. I'm getting worse. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Jamar, Jamar is my. This uh, this is getting worse. Jamar is my guy. Um, until, and this is until he rebuttal. Until he, hey, if he rebuts, I said I'm not to have. I'm not responding. I I think we need we need a a cease. We'll be we'll be in New York. So okay, you know, bring some camera equipment. Bring a mic. No, I'm not bringing nothing. And let's do just a quick conversation. I'm not trying, I'm not. And. and I'll mediate. I'm good. No, you're going to mediate. I'm mediate. good. I'm great. You're only concerned about me mediating because you think I'm a side. You probably will. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, like, I do apologize for make for, uh, for liking. I didn't really, like, again, I, I didn't, I didn't have any context. Um, 
but I feel like we're in this in the midst of this this fake feud. So I got I got to lean in and play into it. If it turns out to be a real feud, then I just threw a bunch of gasoline on he it. Did. Risk I'm willing to take. Okay. Because, like I said, he he did make that fake post. He did. We so. we won't dispute that. Anyways, moving on. Um, you want to do DNC or do you want to do like a 100 episode Rush Vibes look back? Oh my gosh, I don't know that you could just do an impromptu I mean, just, look back. Just like with your favorite, a couple of your favorite moments that you could run ring off the top of your head. <clears throat> or we can just do the DNC. I might have to just do the DNC. Unless you want to do. I, I'll be honest, I don't have much for the DNC, so it would it would be all you. Oh, I mean, it was. I missed the roll call. I kind of want to go back and watch that. Um, I missed it. I honestly don't know that I know the structure of national conventions and how they're supposed to roll outside of like what Lin Manuel Miranda sang in Hamilton. Um, like I know the delegates. That's your source, and that's 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 my source. I am not a poet. Like I, I never got deep into politics, so I don't understand all of that all the nuances um but apparently it's like i think what tales of the cocktails was for me is what the dnc maybe the rnc is for like political people yeah it's a big it's a big party yeah so i when we were in in mexico i watched i guess i also don't know that the order of operations because like Joe spoke on Monday, Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, excuse me, spoke on Monday. And I tried to watch that. And I they the way they kept interrupting that man, like he would just gasp for air. And they were like, we love Joe. And I was like, y'all, can he get through this speech? Like, please. Uh, so I ended up falling asleep. I was tired. Um, and then I watched. Tuesday. Or was it Tuesday I watched? I don't know what day I watched. But I watched um, part of the roll call. And I want to go back and watch the roll call because it looked lit. Like they had a DJ. I don't know who DJ Cassidy is. But he was there. And he had a different song for every state. And it was it just looked fire. Um, but I was on a Zoom call. So I couldn't invest my thoughts into it. Mm. But then I watched. I didn't know who was speaking. I watched some speeches and some of them I was like, it's not really hitting, but I also am not in the room. So I, I assume I can't hear the audio of people responding because people would pause and I'd be like, this seems like a really weird place to pause. So, you know, sometimes when you write something and you think, oh, this is going to hit. So you just stop to like, like you see preachers do it. Like they'll just stop. And it's like, no, like spirit wasn't that like one. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't tell if these were like, they weren't hitting with me, but I am not in the room. So I don't know if everyone's like, woo. Um, and I just can't hear it. So a few people gave speeches and it just, eh. and I was just kind of on the couch. You were putting the little one. Well, Sonoma had passed out. Chick was still in her like toddler tequila mode. She didn't have any tequila. That's just the words I'm using. Um, so she, I, she was sitting on my lap watching her iPad. And then I realized I was just hearing the theme music. I wasn't actually hearing a show. And I was like, David, is she asleep? Because her posture, I couldn't see her face. But she was still holding the iPad. Yeah, she had a grip on that thing. Oh, but he was like, yeah, she's asleep. So she was asleep. So he was putting Savi to bed, who, of course, did not want to go to bed. And I was just sitting on the couch. And I moved over to charge my phone. And I think some lady started speaking and she was talking about Kamala and how she's known her for years. And I was like, okay. And then Michelle Obama walked on the stage and I was like, uh, her highness, Michelle Obama, national treasure for the American people. So I had to listen. I had to listen. And Michelle Obama's speech was in the words of, of, of solace was giving and so Salas was in her room and I'm sitting on the couch and Michelle says something I can't remember if it was the black job statement or there was another statement she said and I made an audible like oh so Salas comes out with her iPad like do 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 what are you watching mom and I was like I'm watching the DNC and she was like what's that so I was like you know Kamala Harris is running for president now right and she was like yeah I know so you know I kind of 
talked her through, you know, I said, this is kind of like a big party celebration as they announce who the nominee representing the party is. And she was like, well, I thought it was Joe Biden. I was like, yeah, he's no longer running. So this is the, the announcement and the celebration that the Democratic Party have selected Kamala Harris. And she was like, oh, OK. So she like gets on the couch, gets under the blanket. Um, and it was late. But I also because I wasn't really into politics, like if she expressed, I think my interest in my response to Michelle Obama pulled her out of her room. So I was like, you know what, kid, like you ain't got nothing to do tomorrow anyway. So sit down. Let's watch. So um, she's sitting there watching it with me. And, you know, Michelle is just boom, 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 boom. Like she is shots fired. Um, I, was, I was like, girl, like you you came to deliver a message and she's like do something and i'm like yeah what do i gotta do like let me find something to do because michelle's telling me do something i gotta do something um and i was just like this is this has to be the end of the night and then then you went to bed no i didn't (laughs) um i was like this has to be the end of the night because the speech is so spectacular nobody would have the audacity to speak after michelle obama except except but there's one person Barack Obama so then she was like but I have one more thing to do so I'm like is she queuing somebody else up and then I realized she was queuing up her man and it was just like and even in his speech he said he's the only person foolish enough to give a speech after Michelle Obama that woman's eloquence her get like her her delivery timing as a couple, they got it. So then Barack gets up here and he was petty with it too. They they were like, we are no longer, we are not in politics anymore. We don't have to be politically correct. Like they'll be diplomatic, but they don't have to be politically di- um, correct. So he's like, he always talking about crowd sizes. And I was like, Barack, no. Like this is a degree of petty. I'm not used to him getting to but it was great it was it was it, it both of those were amazing so of course it's like eleven forty four. they do the benediction they got pastor green come out and then the greek orthodox pastor come out and he was like one true god and all this stuff and people exiting the convention center and i was like wow if i was passionate about politics i would get into politics but i'm not I just don't, I, politics are too ugly for me. And then it went off, and I don't know what channel you were watching it on, but it looped back, and it it's played YouTube. Hillary's speech. It's YouTube. YouTube TV or just YouTube? It's just YouTube. Okay, so it looped back after, I guess, the, the live feed stopped, and then it started playing Hillary's speech. So I listened to a bit of that. I might listen to all of it. Um, um, so I was, I was trying, I was like, I, I remember it being a few days, but I can't remember. I mean, this is a hot minute ago. I mean, I was still working for, I might've been working for five hour when the DNC was in town. Cause I remember my coworker, Dennis, he worked as a bar back at Vita and CNN had rented out the whole establishment. Mm-hmm. And that's where they were like doing broadcast and they had like an after party and stuff there. Um, but I don't know what tonight is, I, but I do want to go back and watch it. Um, I think Joe Biden, Joe Biden, I saw his daughter's speech and it was really good. I saw Doug's speech, not Doug's speech. I saw Doug's speech, so, but I saw his Colin's speech. So Doug's speech. Yeah. So Colin gave a speech introducing his father. Um, mm, Colin. Colin, mm. Doug's son. I understand. You know them? The second <clears throat> son. You know them? Second stepson. So I don't know. Uh, I felt like I knew them. Their 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 story's really cute, and I know people kind of like come for Kamala. She doesn't have kids, um, you know, and she's you know a, a woman of color, and she's raising someone else with kids and the all that stuff. People do have a lot of audacity. The audacity to not have people to just, not have kids. Strong word. I'm like, have y'all had kids? Mm. It, it, I'm telling you, man. Yes, the Lord said, "Be fruitful, and multiply," but like. That math, it doesn't know this math the way it needs to. And it's it's rough. We just took three of them to Mexico. So, I mean, I think people forget. That's why I don't like politics. Because I feel like Grace. Because people don't have kids? No. Um, <laughs> because I feel like Grace doesn't exist. I feel like people are very hypocritical. And I don't like. I, if I were in politics, I'd be fighting too much. And I don't want to have to do that. Um, like some people, their character is consistent. Like this is who you are. 
But there are some people who it's like, oh, yeah, they might have said some questionable things a few years ago. But, like, there needs to be space for grace. Um, and I think there's a lot of, like, cross-contamination with church and state and Christianity and different races and different religions and all of that. And I'm like, y'all, like, come up, figure out what you want. But you can't use certain pawns when it's most beneficial for you. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, where was I going? I was going somewhere. Yeah, so people get on her for you know not having her own children i know um a lot of people even in like the black community like oh you know you're raising you know what white kids um and it's just like you know people i'm always a firm believer i don't care what color someone's partner is my only issue is when someone has to bring one race down to uplift another I've said it before on a podcast. If you're literally just making your way da- downtown, walking fast, and the face you pass happens to be of a different race, and that's the face you fall in love with, I'm here for it. I love it. I love it for you because love is great. <clears throat> Families are great. But I think it's so, like, I, I've never appreciated people who criminalize someone for loving someone or have building a life with someone who doesn't match them um complexion wise so that's my so thing you don't, you don't get down with the teachings of the honorable dr umar johnson no i had a window where he almost pulled me in it was during covid i was we were locked inside so it was just like <laughs> now now's it like it was a brief yeah, umar, had, umar had his chance man had me and just you know i was saved saved by grace it's crazy no, and honestly, watching that the the segment like uh, Colin's introduction, like how you, how they started calling her Mamala and all of that stuff, yep. like it's at, it, you, and that's another reason why I'm too personal to get into politics or to appreciate politics because this was really the first time I've, I've known Kamala Harris's name for years, but this was the first time I saw her the way they they edited it, the way they provided the like the, the his narration of it like you saw her as a woman and i, I don't mean a woman like i i but a, a regular woman not so yeah, not who she is a, outside of her title yeah. yeah so that i really appreciate the, that the person if you think about it like it's also I, i've never been part of a blended family but i also i recognize what a kind of no somewhat you know culturally, what I mean culturally, oh, you mean blended in that, that sense? Okay, I thought you meant blended like. So you gonna let me speak? I'm sorry. I'll be sure not to ever interrupt you. So I've never been part of a blended family, but I respect that decision that someone makes. Like I am, whether this person has children or not. In the case of Kamala Harris, she didn't have children, and she's married someone who is divorced, has kids, and is now going to step in and you know i've watched blended families i have friends who are part of blended families who have built blended families um and that's not easy that's it's not easy stepping in because now you know you're parenting you have to parent along with two other people who are like these are their parents so i always admire people who are willing to make that decision put in that that work Um, because that's that's a lot of work that's a sacrifice and that's that's a conscious uh, like I'm not just loving you; I'm loving you and your children, and I'm willing to take no, on. I ain't know them. You don't. I ain't know them like that. And then you don't know their mom or their dad. Mm, or dad, the tendencies. It's crazy. Could be. So it's just like it's that's that. I think that is actually more self-sacrificial than like two people who have no. I mean, everyone has baggage, like. You got we all got parents and all this stuff, but I think that's more because it's like it's it's expected. Like, oh, I marry you, and I got to deal with your parents too. You got to deal with my parents too. But like, I got to deal with your parents, and then deal with your ex, and then deal with your children. That's that's a lot. That that's commendable in my and in my perspective from my perspective. So to like kind of see like and Doug told their story like how he it was really. Did you listen to it? No, it was really cute. Like. It was a blind date. Like he got her number. He called her eight thirty in the morning. Left her like an awkward voicemail that she still has. She mm-hmm. still plays it on their anniversary every year. That's, I was like, that's a like that's a door. Like there's a love story there. Um, 
and they're a family there. And I think people take that away. Like there's, they're personable. Like I could see hanging out with someone like that. Um, So I, I appreciated how they, and maybe because the competitor is, you know, someone who has put himself on a podium competitor competitor uh, has put himself on a podium where he just seems unattainable to like common folks. Not like, gonna say his name. The competitor. The competitor. <laughs> the alternative. The alternative. The um. What's another? The, uh, alternative is is, is appropriate because okay. you know alternative facts. Yes. The alternative. The alternative, the alternative the, candidate. The alternative competitor. The alternative um, candidate. He he has he comes with a king type perspective where it's like you know you are my this is the court i am the king like you all look up to me whereas they just gave a perspective of like you could be equal to not equal but like we could share a meal together sure um you so can I share just, you can share a mcdonald's meal with i don't eat mcdonald's so I couldn't. So y'all could have your kids share. You wouldn't be. You wouldn't be caught in McDonald's. So I mean, I would say if you haven't seen it, go back and watch just that that last before Michelle came on. Watch Michelle too. But like from Colin to Doug, it was just really beautiful. Like seeing like these are these are human people. Yeah. Um, and 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 whatever your political view, if you can subtract or just put down your walls of policy and whatnot and just really like take the time to know, like learn who a person is. Um, I really appreciated that. So, I mean, I could go on a tangent about, you know, Christians and their, you know, political stances and, and how I don't, I think a lot of it is very hypocritical, Hmm. but I won't. Hmm. Interesting. What is interesting? I mean, I'm, I recognize that my political viewpoints as a believer probably don't align with most believers, and I'm okay with that. But that's why I won't get into politics because I'd be fighting, and I don't, I don't have that, I don't have the energy. I got three kids. I'm always, yeah. we're always refereeing someone. I, I couldn't let that be my look. I hate political commercials. I just don't like nastiness. But we've. Um, We've talked for a bit. Speaking of nasty, um, I want to take this opportunity to uh, say if there's anyone out there who lives in North Carolina who is registered to vote, I don't really beg in my life. I, I, I make it oh, a point. Gosh. I make it a point. Not to beg, but I'm you beg. You definitely beg. Hush. I'm going to beg, beg. and implore um, anyone who's undecided. To not vote for Mark Robinson because he's trash. And I'm just going to leave it at that. It's just trash. Um, I don't really need to expand on that. Because once you recognize trash, and I go, oh, let me go dig and see like, what's in here. Because you know it's trash. And it's not something you want to deal with. It needs to be thrown out. So... Please do not put that man in office. <laughs> this is all I'm gonna say. Um, he can go back to the pulpit and 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 spew all that. He's a preacher. No, I don't know. Oh, but I'd be seeing him. People invite pastors invite him to church and let him do whatever. Uh, so he can go to his radical churches and keep that rhetoric over there. But it it it, it he has no place uh, at the head of the state um, because he's trash. So I would implore everybody who's undecided. To consider your other alternatives, <laughs> alternative candidates, other than than Mark Robinson, because it's garbage. Um, no, no curiosity about how I felt about DNC. You just gonna do your thing and you said you didn't watch it. I asked you. I, I didn't. So then what? I don't know if you. I, I've seen some of it, but I don't know if you multiple times. Like, did you? And you were like, no. Yeah. What's your feedback? What's your thoughts? How do you feel? Would you go? Would I? Would I go? To a DNC, if somebody invited me, I'd go. I wouldn't. I don't know that I'd pay to go. Um, I think I'm good on speeches, though. Like you've heard enough. I, I think. I think I'm just. I'm at a stage in my life where, um, I I identify charisma. I can see who has it, and I can I can assess how good of a charisma someone has. Uh, but I'm I'm just. 
good on speeches. I just want to know what you're going to do yeah. <laughs> and, and how you and how you're going to do it. Like I get the love affair for the Obamas and I, I got mad love and respect for them too. Um, how's your, you know, how's your, uh, what do you call it? Um, the things people have policies, missions, mission statement. No, um, your, your outreach yeah. organizations and things like that. Like how, how are those doing? Mm. Like, I, I, I mean, I know the whole concept of the DNC is to like get the base, you know, obviously announce the candidate, support, support get the candidate, get the base route up. It's like a really big MLM event without the cell. Or maybe there is a cell. I don't know. Depending upon I look at it. But anyways, um, but outside of that, like, I'm good. I just want to know, like, I just want to know what, what you're going to do. Because I'm 36 going on 37. Um, I got three kids. Three of three kids. Uh, I want to know what their world's going to look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and how your decisions are going to shape that world that they live in that we have to parent them in it's really all i'm concerned about at this point so the the crowd sizes the like that's cool and i get it like it's you know i'm sure the delivery was perfect because obama's delivery is amazing um and i'm sure michelle's you know they're they're both amazing orators but you know i'm the base main the greater base Democratic base may need that to get them fueled and, and fired up as a, as an independent voter. I don't, I don't need that. I need to know what, you know, mm-hmm. I'm more, I'm only interested in the pieces of that, that tell me specifically what your vision for this country is in the next four years. And that's the same for any candidate, be it yeah. president, vice president, president, mayor, councilman, councilwoman, like whatever. I think um, to that's, your, that's where I'm at. Your point. I, I have, uh, maybe another reason why I'm not big on politics is because I have very minimal confidence that what everyone says they're going to do, they're yeah. actually going to do. Because I've, I've spent the last 34 years watching different people tell us, like, vote for me. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. And I don't know that I've actually seen... Yeah. Any of these policies affect my life. I don't know that I haven't seen it, but I don't know that I have. Well, they, they do, but it's also just really hard. Like politics is hard. Like getting elected is, is hard. Mm-hmm. And, and it costs so much money. Affecting immediately or easily identifiable change is just hard because you have so many other different uh, people or mm-hmm. bodies that you have to, you know, um, what do they call it? Uh, you have to work with. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, it's just, hard. it's just hard. Like politics yeah. is hard. So, you know, that's why. So that's why Democrats say, "Oh, we got to control the House and the Senate," because obviously, the the more people you have on your side, the less red tape there is. Yeah. The less you have to barter and and negotiate and and go back and forth. So, yeah, it's 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 very difficult for any one politician to affect mass change. It ha- it has to it has to work. In uh, lock and step with mm-hmm. a number of of other individuals or or bodies, but yeah, it's just it's hard. But there's a delayed effect with politics. Like politics is more, even though we're living in it now, the effects of it aren't recognized until later. Like I feel like you know people will reference like not Nixon, uh, is it Roosevelt? Like they'll re- they'll call out like specific presidents in their term and like how things were good there. Mm. But it's like when we were in it in that moment were, and obviously some of these I weren't, bo- I wasn't born for, but like, did we recognize it was good or are we yeah. able to look back on it? And well, see? I would say, I would say Obamacare is probably an exception. It's not Obama. That's what he said in his speech. He was like, it's funny that it's not called Obamacare now that it like, it's, it's become it's, Obamacare. It's, it's popular now. Mama called it Obamacare. I'm gonna call it Obamacare. So Obamacare, <laughs> like that. But that was he said that in his speech, like how is it's no longer Obamacare. Well, and it was it was a Republican plan before yes. they he put his he put his, well, his name on it. Yeah, Massachusetts. Yeah. Um. So I, I that's why like I when I look at Paul, a lot of it just seems to be because we were in you know like people would blame Biden for stuff, 
but it was policies that Trump had pushed through. So it's like, even though you're president now, what you push through is not going to benefit me in the now. May not may not benefit or has me a high likelihood it's going to affect yeah. in the future so sure but there, yeah i mean there are some things that that you'll you see immediate that take take uh <clears throat> take shape immediately but you're right a lot of things they tend to to be down the line mm-hmm. i mean of course constitutional changes and stuff i recognize yeah. will affect you know like you said our children and whatnot but um sometimes i say i'm gonna like start learning more about politics and then i'm just like no I took an intro to poli sci. I was going to be. I, You've got people. Well, never mind. I plan. Wait, what? Oh, no, I don't. Uh, so say what people. I have. I was. I sent. I was planning to study political science. And then I took. The first poli sci, like one, one twenty one. And I was just like, mm-mm. No. I was, there was, there was a time I was, I was heavy into it. You still are. Let Wolf Blitzer get on the screen. That's just because Wolf is my guy. Um, That's my man. And I hate that they pulled him for Tapper on election night. It's ridiculous. But anyways, um, no, nah, I used to be into it like even heavier than I'm not really into it heavy. Uh, I I try to remain in earshot of things to know what's what's happening, what's going on. Um, but like the day to day, what's going on on the hill, and you know this person like is it introduced articles of like I'm not I'm not following all that. So, but there was a time I was, I was all into it. It's before you and me. I was, it's a different man back then. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, but now, yeah, not really. But I like you. So there are times where I thought, I mean, I need, I need to, to maybe not get to that point. Um, but just get to a place where I, I have knowledge. a better, a better lay of the land in terms of what's, what's going on landscape certain races that can like swing majorities and, and things like that um wouldn't be wouldn't be the worst thing in the world but it's just all about time and making it and and what do you value more like that or something else mm-hmm. so um but yeah but if you don't do anything else just vote. make sure you register to vote I wanna get this nuts go out and go out and vote for somebody um, what you got? I felt like you were trying to transition before I pulled you back to the DNC. Um, I was. I mean, I was just going to talk about how I think we. I was going to New Orleans after the last episode we recorded. Mm-hmm. Um, so we didn't record then, and then we ended up going to. I had activations in San Francisco, mm-hmm. so we went out there. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, didn't get to run into anybody threads related but did get to see an old friend and her new husband so that was nice um let's go and then we have a trip coming up in yeah a couple weeks. Gotta, gotta go up to the concrete jungle where dreams are made of yeah so we'll be we'll be on the move have been on the move we have been and we've been a busy we'll, we'll continue to be it looks like for at least the beginning of next month yeah it's a busy season but i'm enjoying it i'm actually i take it as i i you know me i'm i'm spiritual i apply every holy spirit to everything but i am a firm believer that i am we are busy to not have free time to get caught up in other things what those other things are i don't know but like sometimes you're just in a busy season because God just don't want you to have idle time. So there's one of us. <laughs> um, it's been a good season. Yeah, it's been great. It's it's the kids are good. We're good. I think we're good. Are we good? We haven't checked in, in a while. I'd like to be. Mm, yeah, it'll be, be good this week. Uh, <laughs> I hate nature. <laughs> I hate biology. Whatever anatomy, whatever the hell it's called, hate it. <clears throat> um, well, I guess I just gotta <laughs> go into my go get my little dictionary. Shout out to Fresh Prince. That's funny. That's funny. I'm just, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. 
you know, good and with damn well, I don't have no chick shit. Okay. Be triggered about everything. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. That's what about the about the what? <laughs> about the host of about the host of what? Re-election campaign. <laughs> about to Joe Biden. You. I apparently I haven't been elected in the first place, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, quick thoughts on a hundred episodes of Rush Vibes. Part of me is a little disappointed it took this long to get here. I think. Okay, how about the good the good thoughts? Uh because I'm not I don't have time for you to little uh, I think I just I mean I'm just gonna be real with us. Uh-huh. Like we we could have done we could have done more. Uh but you know, it's just been fun. It's I think we've taken a different approach this season just because we're in busyness and I think we're still even a what I find interesting is even a hundred episodes in we're still finding a groove not with how we communicate but like what are we what are we talking about mm. where like what because you know people will be like oh you know you should just you know focus on one thing uh, but i think we try to gear towards current events but we don't really stay current right well you don't i don't i don't say current um but we're still able to get through. So like my goal for the next 100 episodes is, yeah, is I would love for us to get some notoriety. I would love for us to, you know, really start like maybe coming up like marketing and doing the things. Like, I think that we have the potential to really have a podcast that can do more. Um, and get more viewership and grow. I think it's just a matter of us actually putting in the work and understanding and doing the research and, and all of that. Like, I think we're in an era that you can be man self-made. You just have to make yourself. What about you? Um, no surprise, probably, uh, the inverse of your, your initial assessment is I think about how many podcasts don't make it to episode 100, hmm. no matter the amount of time. Um, a lot of people, because it's easy to start, it's got a very low barrier to entry. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when someone gets into it, and this even just people who do audio podcasts, don't forget about the video, uh, it's, it's not easy. And, you know, how many... I mean, we still don't get a whole lot of viewers on YouTube and I don't even check the the audio download numbers, but, um, how many, how many episodes did we have? Like 20 views and like all of them were us either replaying it back or mom <laughs> taking time to, to watch it or Jarrell or Jarrell having it on multiple, uh, multiple devices. That's, like that's, that's, there's no, right there. unless you're already notable, you know, it, it, that, the gratification, whatever you want to call it, is extremely delayed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've only just recently, I think, within the last 10, 15 episodes, I don't know how many we've done since we've we've relocated, um, have done like triple digit views. So I just think about the fact that we did stick with it, uh, though, you know, there, there are issues with consistency to get to a hundred, I think is a, is a significant accomplishment and I'm proud of us because we've done it for a while, but we're obviously, I, I still think that we're still relatively raw mm-hmm. uh, at it. But even in that we've, I've taught myself about a lot. Um, and you've learned, I would imagine <clears throat> uh, a ton just being a part of it. Uh, we've learned a lot together. So, yeah, I'm just proud of us for sticking with it. Um, there are times where we could just be like, you know what? Let's just let let the podcast go. We're in a different space. It's not as convenient. Um, it takes too much time. But, you know, I think we just have this. this we love it. This rock solid. Yeah, this rock solid commitment to the pod. And I, I don't know an exact number, but there are a number of people who have expressed that they enjoy it to me. And, you know, that's enough along with, with our, our love and appreciation for it, that coupled with 
the outside feedback that I get, I think is enough for us to continue to, to push on. Uh, we just have to be, be more consistent. Um, that's how you, if the, the, the goal is now more nor- notoriety, that's how you give yourself a chance to stand out is being consistent. So we have to figure out a way that we can do it amid a crazy schedule that we don't even know what it's going to be yet. <laughs> that's, that's going to be the tricky part, but it's a challenge like anything else. And, mm-hmm. you know, looking forward to it, but no, I'm just, I'm just, I just think about from the first twisted T episode to, you know, having guests like Leah and Mark um, Missy, Missy, and I'm going to leave people out if I start naming, but James, Bethany, Bethany, Jacynthia, Alan, um, Essence, Essence, Essence. uh, who else? I feel like I'm leaving somebody out, but I think that might be it. That might be everybody. Um, we haven't done a lot of guests. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just incredible. Like, in that first season when we would record and I'd be up all night and put it out and then go to work, like, Oh my God. Like we did. And yeah, then emergency course. pod episodes where we had Mark come in that night and edited it. And I'm just, I'm just grateful, man. It's, uh, it's, and then the set, like the old set that we had, I was really proud of that. Putting that thing, that rush vibe studio 2.0 together. One day. It was nice. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy and grateful. And and thank you to everyone who, um, has been with us from the jump and everybody who's kind of joined us along the way Our uh, I know we've got a, a, a group of staunch supporters who have been with us. Obviously my, my parents, our friend, our close friends, the Wilkinsons, um, James, Jarrell, Joe, Missy, like, there's a whole, I could name a whole bunch of the new NBA and th- NBA threads fam, like everybody who's listened to one episode or all hundred, like just appreciate everybody. Cause it's, we don't get paid for it. <laughs> we make no money would love whatsoever. To. Would love we to. might as well be a nonprofit. So if you're in position so, to help us gain money. So it's, you know, it's all for the love of, of the process and all for, you know, giving back all that, for you that appreciation that the people show us so oh and cousin cousin lindia i had to give her a shout yes. she's always she was like are we gonna get episode 99 and so i know once we dropped 99 she was thinking like are we ever gonna get 100 so here it is cousin lindia for you episode 100 oh and mark and lamont yeah they're the loyalists yeah mark um you gotta have actually to mark out. actually contributed to some of our gear early on and which allowed us to eventually upgrade so uh, shout out to we've been blessed cousin Mark. We got, a, we got a great support system that we do. Any else? Mm-mm. All right. Well, that is episode 100 of Rush Five. By now, y'all should know where to find us here on YouTube. So make sure you hit the like, subscribe button so you can see episode 101. And if you're an audio listener, we're obviously on Apple Music and Spotify and tune in and youtube music so you can find us there share it with a friend us, you can find us here and you can also find us on rushvibes.com should you want to visit our website but there's, there's nothing there but episodes but maybe we'll add some some stuff to it at some point but as of right now you can find us there youtube or your audio po- podcast platforms all right that's it <clears throat> signing off and just just to reiterate Fake feud. It's all love, Jamar. <laughs> we out. See y'all later. Peace. Nothing but some growing pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too far.